Right, so today we're doing a video on how to build book Windows 10 and Ubuntu 16.04. So getting right into it, you want to open up your web browser and head over to this site, which I'll be linking in the description, and scroll down until you find option 2, which is here, and download the turn off fast startup.bat. This will disable fast startup, which is necessary if you want to dual boot well, Windows with Linux. Simply open up the folder where it's downloaded, right click it, press run administrator, hit yes, and it'll run and it's done. Now we can move on to the next step. Next step is to download whatever um, uh, Linux distribution you want to use. For example, in this tutorial, we're going to be using Ubuntu, Ubuntu 16.04. So you just head over to Desktop, um, Overview, Download Ubuntu, uh, Download. Scroll down, you can donate if you want, otherwise just press Not Now to take me to the download. And it should start downloading the latest version of Ubuntu. Simply hit Save, and wait for it to download. All right, so after Ubuntu is finished downloading, you want to head over to this site, which will be linked in the description as well, Rufus, and this will allow you to create a, U a bootable USB drive so you can actually boot into Ubuntu on your computer. Simply scroll down to the download section, download the latest version, for me it's 2.11. Press save, and open up the folder where it's at. Open it up, hit yes. And you want to choose your USB device there. Uh, I don't have one plugged in right now, but you could just choose your USB device there. Uh, leave the partition default, leave the file system default, probably should be on FAT32 or XFAT. Cluster size, you can have that at default, or otherwise have it on um, 4096 bytes. And then after that, we want to go down to here, where it says create bootable disk using FreeDOS, change it to ISO image, click this. This will allow us to choose the um, uh, Ubuntu ISO file, double click on it, and it will load it in, and then press start and wait for it to run and then you'll be done and you can take your USB device out. All right, so after that's done, we can hit close, close, close. We don't need these anymore. And it's fine, the fine time for the final step in Windows, which is partitioning the drive to allow for some space to, to install Linux on. So open up your start menu and type in disk management and click this one. And it'll open up. After it opens up, you want to find your C drive. Uh, mine's here, disk zero C drive. Right click it and press shrink volume. After this comes up, this is where we decide how much space we want to um, allow for Linux to install. It's in megabytes, so you want to, you want to work out um, how many gigabytes you want um, using a calculator. So you can just open up the Windows calculator. And say you wanted a 10 gigabyte uh, drive to install Linux on, you want to type, you want to do uh, 10 times 1024, and we'll get 10240, and we'll type in 10240, and that's a 10 gig drive to install Linux onto, which is um quite a small drive, but I'm doing this just to show you guys how to dual boot, and then you want to press shrink, and let it run, and then you'll have a 10 gigabyte unallocated um, space partition on your drive. Um, after that, you can cross that off, and you want to plug your USB device into your computer, and then probably the most difficult step of the whole thing, which is actually setting the boot order um, and trying to get your computer to boot from the USB device. On, see, it's different for every motherboard, so it's usually a case of um, going into the BIOS um, and changing the boot order to boot from USB drive or portable hard drive or removable hard drive or whatever it may be called. You can look up the model for your motherboard and often get a guide on the internet on how to do it there. I can't sh unfortunately show you because it's different for everyone's, like I said. So simply what you want to do is reboot your computer um, and boot from the USB. I'll be back when I'm there. All right, so after you've got Ubuntu to boot off a USB stick, you'll be greeted by the screen which says, try Ubuntu without installing, install, check this for defects, test memory, or boot from first hard disk. Um, when you first uh, get to the screen, it's always good to check the disk for defects to um, to make sure that nothing has gone wrong. So simply press enter on that and wait for it to load. And it should just do a self-test just to make sure the disk is all okay. And after it finished, it will say press any key to reboot your system. So just go and do that. All right, so after reboot your system, it's gonna come up with this. It's gonna say install Ubuntu or try Ubuntu. Um, and we're gonna go for the install Ubuntu option. Just uh, choose your language on the left-hand side. I'm using English, so I'll press install. Um, 
you can tick the download updates while installing Ubuntu if you're connected to the internet, which I am, so I'm going to tick that and install third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi hardware, Flash, MP3, and other media. This is um, often a good option because it will uh, install some drivers which you uh, may require, so I always often tick that as well, but it's up to you. Okay, continue. All right, after that's done, it will say install Ubuntu alongside Windows 10 or a RAID disk and install Ubuntu, or you can do something else which you can create and resize the public partitions uh, the way you like. Um, for people who don't want to mess around with partitions anymore, you could go for the install Ubuntu alongside Windows 10 option, which is the simplest option. Um, but sometimes this option doesn't appear for some reason, so I'm going to go with the something else option and show you how to do that. But if the install Ubuntu alongside Windows 10 does come up for you, then just go with that because it's the easiest and quickest way. Alright, so once we're here, we're going to see the free space which we freed up in Windows 10 earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this free space and click the plus symbol down here. Um, after this window comes up, you'll see the size, the type, the uh, location, and the type of file system type, and the mount point. So, first of all, we're going to set up some swaps. So, go to the use as, and then swap area, and we're going to choose the size for this. Um, usually, you want to have it at least the size of your amount of RAM, um, or more. So, often it's recommended that you take the amount of RAM that you have in your computer, times it by 2, or 1.5, and then use that as the swap area. But uh, we, we only have a very limited amount of RAM on this machine, so I'm just going to simply type in um, 3072, which is 3 gigabytes, which is the amount of RAM I have in this computer, and hit OK. After that's done, it will leave us with uh, 7 gigs of uh, free space when it hit the plus symbol again, um, and we can just set it to mount point uh, root, which is this, which is just the, um, the forward slash, and hit OK. And then after that's done, we can simply go ahead and click on the, um, the mount point, the uh, route we just clicked on, and hit install now. And we'll install it to the hit continue, and it will write the changes to the disk. Choose your location. I'm in the, uh, I'm in the UK, so I'll just hit continue there. Choose your um, keyboard layout and language and all that. UK, UK for me. And then here you can type in your name um, computers like name on the network and all that. So I'm just going to uh, type in Adam. We'll do the computer name as Adam Ubuntu. Username Adam. Password. Password. This is certainly just a test machine. Um, choose your options there if you want to log in automatically or not, or if you want to encrypt your home folder. And press continue. And it will begin the install. You can click this little arrow next to copy and files to see what's currently going on. Um, so yeah, that's what you got to do, just wait for it to install from here on. Alright, and after the install is complete, it will say install is complete, you need to restart the computer in order to choose the installation. Simply hit restart now, and I'll be back when it's done. Alright, so next time you boot up your computer, you'll be uh, greeted with a um, grub menu, which ha will have the option for Ubuntu, advanced options, memory test, memory test, um, serial console, and Windows 10. Um, from here, you can uh, simply use the arrow keys and the enter button to select what one you want to use. Um, you can go down to the bottom and select Windows 10 if you want to boot to Windows 10. Go right to the top and select Ubuntu if you want to boot to Ubuntu. If you want to customise how this menu looks, uh, you want to go into Ubuntu. And I'll show you how to customise the Grub menu to make it look more interesting. Alright, so after you're in Ubuntu, you want to log in. So with your um, details of when you just did the installation. Alright, so after your desktop, you want to click on the Firefox icon over here on the left and wait for it to load up. After it loads up, you want to go up to the search bar and type in Grub Customizer. And you want to click on the link, which is the Launchpad PPA for Grub Customizer, Daniel Richter. This is the second link for me. And you'll, say, you'll see the PPA description at the top, and it will have all of these commands. What you want to do is end, uh, go up to the search your computer in the top left, and type in Terminal into the search, and click the terminal. And we are going to need this in a minute, so simply select this line. Right-click, copy, go back to your terminal, and then right-click, paste, hit enter, type in your password, hit enter again to confirm, and then copy the second line, and right-click, paste it into the terminal, and then finally, copy the third line, 
right click, paste it into the terminal, hit enter, and it will, and you can type uh, Y to confirm that you want to install it. Hit enter then, and it will begin to install Grub Customizer. All right, so after it's in, uh, finished, you can close off the terminal and you can um, close off uh, Firefox as well. And you want to go back up to your search computer and then type in Grub, and the Grub Customizer should appear there. Type in your password. And here's the Grub Customizer. Wait for it to load, and all the entries should appear. Uh, if you remember um, from earlier, we had Ubuntu, Memory Test, Memory Test, and Windows 10. Um, for example, you if you wanted to move Windows 10 to the top, so it's the default option, you could uh, click on it here and click this Move Up option, and it will just move it up slowly right to the top. There you go. And now it says Windows 10 is first on the list, and then Ubuntu. If you want to change what Grub looks like, we can go to the appearance settings and we can choose a custom resolution, we can choose a theme, we can choose the, um, all the fonts. For example, we can choose some custom colours, so we could serve, say we wanted the font to be red, we wanted the background to be uh, pink, you maybe, we maybe want the highlighted to be uh, blue, we wanted, um, we wanted the highlighted background to be, I don't know, um, yellow. Not sure why anyone wanted, would want to use that set of colours, but uh, you know, maybe you do. Um, and after you finish doing your configurations and stuff, you can hit save, and it will update the Grub config. And the next time you reboot your computer, the changes will be in effect, as I'll show you now. All right, so as you can see, um, the Windows 10 is now at the top of the Grub uh, list. Strangely, the colors haven't actually taken effect, which is a bit odd. Um, you may just go and configure some up from uh, your other options of the Grub customizer. But after all, it doesn't really matter as long as it works and you've got your dual boot and you've got your dual boot setup working. Um, that's what matters at the end of the day. All right, so thank you all for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this, and I'll see you in the next one.